speech. In 1947, on her 21st birthday, Queen Elizabeth pledged in a broadcast from Cape Town to the Commonwealth to devote her life, whether it be short or long, to the service of her peoples. That was more than a promise. It was a profound personal commitment which defined her whole life. She made sacrifices for duty. Her dedication and devotion as sovereign never wavered. Through times of change and progress, through times of joy and celebration, and through times of sadness and loss. In her life of service, we saw that abiding love of tradition, together with that fearless embrace of progress, which make us great as nations. The affection, admiration, and respect she inspired became the hallmark of her reign. In the course of the last 70 years, we have seen our society become one of many cultures and many faiths. The institutions of the state have changed in turn, but our values have remained and must remain constant. I have been brought up to cherish a sense of duty to others and to hold in the greatest respect the precious traditions, freedoms and responsibilities of our unique history and our system of parliamentary government. I now solemnly pledge myself throughout the remaining time God grants me to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of our nation. And wherever you may live in the United Kingdom or in the realms and territories across the world, and whatever may be your background or beliefs, I shall endeavour to serve you with loyalty, respect and love, as I have throughout my life. A prayer for the King. O oh God, you provide for your people by your power and rule over them in love. Receive the gratitude which we offer this day for your servant Charles, our King. Send your blessing upon his work that under him we may be wisely governed and all people may serve you in faith, hope, and love. Amen. King of kings and Lord of lords, fill the heart of all in authority with the love of your lords. We give thanks for the faith of King Charles. We give thanks today for our precious one, its creatures and all life on earth. We give thanks for those who strive to protect our planet, its natural beauty and its delicate ecosystems. We give thanks to the world and the
48. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, heaven of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He made them fast for ever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, tempestuous wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and birds on the wing, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and women, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name is only exalted, his splendor above earth and heaven. He has raised up the horn of his people, and praise for all his faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Alleluia. Little miracles. If you're wanting to witness a miracle, don't mope around hoping one shows. There are plenty already in motion. Just look past the end of your nose. Behold the mundane and atypical, the wind as it whistles and blows, the endless devotion of waves in the ocean, the flower that aimlessly grows. The forest of oak never planted, the lure of the moon as it glows, the beautiful hues of a sunrise from the palette that nobody chose. The miracles taken for granted, the tap that continuously flows, the constant supplies of skinny french fries, the scent of a single red rose. The wheel that allows us to travel, the brake we apply as it slows, the fire that warms to your middle, the weight of each flake as it snows, the fortified walls of the castle, a warning to all who oppose, brain that can fathom a riddle, the foot that can wiggle its toes. The galaxy is out in the distance, so far away nobody goes. And here we are part of the process for reasons that nobody knows. So miracles are in existence. They're just wearing ordinary clothes. Perhaps now I've told you you'll notice. Just look past the end of your nose.
Fill the hearts of all in authority with the love of your laws and with all that is righteous and life-giving. We give thanks for the faith and wisdom of King Charles. For Charles our King, that you may pour upon him abundant gifts to help him fulfil the promises he will make when he is crowned King. For all who will play a part in the coronation tomorrow, that they will be given the strength to carry out the duties entrusted to them. We give thanks for the dedication and commitment of King Charles as he prepares to be crowned. We light this candle to mark the recognition. Charles will be presented to those gathered in the Abbey by the Archbishop of Canterbury, and the congregation will shout, God save King Charles. We light this candle to mark the oath. King Charles III will make his promise to all people and to God. We light this candle to mark the anointing. The Archbishop will apply holy oil to Charles's hands, chest and head and bless him as he reigns as king. We light this candle to mark the investiture. King Charles is presented with the sovereign's orb representing the world and the cross and the so sovereign's scepter representing power and responsibility. And we light this candle to mark the enthronement and homage. Charles is crowned king and he will express all he wants to do as the new monarch. We light this candle to say thank you. Thank you for our families and our friends, our school and our homes, our city and our country. We light this candle to say thank you. Thank you for those who seek to help those who are less fortunate than ourselves, and for those who seek to help those who do not find life as easy as we do. We light this candle to say thank you. Thank you for all those who study and learn and use their knowledge to better our world and our environment. We light this candle to say thank you. Thank you for the time to be thankful, to come together as a community and celebrate our freedom to express all we believe.
King of kings and Lord of lords, fill the hearts of all in authority with the love of your laws and with all that is righteous and life-giving, that together with them we may be wise, worthy stewards of your gifts and this planet. We give thanks for the faith and wisdom of King Charles. Finally, we remember with thanks today all those who share our planet and for all those people, all faiths and none, who make up our communities. We think of those who continue to face challenges and difficulties. Amen. Amen. Ark by Simon Armitage. They sent out a dove. It wobbled home, wings slicked in a rainbow of oil. A sprig of tinsel snagged in its beak, a yard of fishing line binding its feet. Bring back, bring back the leaf. They sent out an arctic fox. It plodded the bays of the northern fringe in muddy socks and a nylon cape. Bring back, bring back the leaf. Bring back the reed and the reef. Set the ice sheet back on its frozen plinth. Tuck the restless watercourse into its bed. Sit the glacier down on its highland throne. Put the snow cap back on the mountain peak. Let the northern lights be the northern lights, not the alien glow over Glasgow or Leeds. A camel capsized in a tropical flood, caimans dozed in Antarctic lakes, polymers rolled in the sturgeon's blood, hippos wandered the housing estates. Bring back, bring back the leaf, bring back the tusk and the horn and shorn, Bring back the fern, the fish, the frond and the fowl, the golden toad and the pygmy owl. Revisit the scene where swallowtails fly through acres of unexhausted sky. They sent out a boat. Go, little breaker, splinter the pack ice and flows, nose through the rafts and pads of wrappers and bottles and nurdles and cans, the bergs and atolls and islands and states of plastic bags and microbeads and the forests of smoke. Bring back, bring back the leaf, bring back the river and the sea. A teacher of the law came up and tried to trap Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to receive eternal life? And Jesus answered him, what do the scriptures say? How do you interpret them? The man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. You are right, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But the teacher of the law wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered, there was once a man who was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when robbers attacked him, stripped him and beat him up, leaving him half dead. It so happened that a priest was going down that road, but when he saw the man, he walked on by on the other side. And in the same way, a Levite also came there, went over and looked at the man and then walked on, walked on by on the other side. But a Samaritan, who was traveling that way, came upon the man, and when he saw him, his heart was filled with pity. He went over to him, and he poured oil and wine on his wounds, and he bandaged them. And then he put the man on his own animal and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. And the next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper, Take care of him, he told the innkeeper. When I come back this way, I will pay you whatever else you've spent on him. And Jesus concluded, so in your opinion, which one of these three acted like a neighbor towards the man attacked by the robbers? And the teacher of the law answered, well, the one who was kind to him. 
And Jesus replied, you go then and do the same. We join together today our hopes for our world, our wishes for the future, and our thanks for those we love. congratulations on your coronation and that everyone at Newton Prep will be thinking of you, obviously, as you begin your reign. I've done some Googling on the coronation website and it turns out that throughout the duration of the ceremony, there will be three crowns worn, a large gold anointing spoon used, four swords held, an orb and four scepters also held, and a very large ring worn. But none of these things weigh as heavy and as deeply on our hearts as the vows you will make to our country that you will protect and serve like the monarchs before you. Everyone at Newton Prep wants you to know that we trust you completely and are so excited for what your reign will bring. I know lots of young people will look forward to living up to your example of service and care for others that you will no doubt set. For you to be the role model that the citizens of the United Kingdom and indeed around the world will look up to as reigning monarch. I hope you know and inspire everyone for your environment-saving, equality-bringing work. Yours sincerely, Alice Booth. Your Royal Highness, I am writing this letter on behalf of Newton Prep School in Battersea, just before your coronation. We are all very appreciative of the effort that you have put into your work so far, whether it is as one of the original eco-warriors or your diligence and hard work as a serving royal. We hope that you will have a lengthy and successful reign as king and that you, your wife Camilla, the rest of the royal family and, of course, the government will work incredibly hard to help the people of the United Kingdom and perhaps even more importantly, the whole world. On top of that, we all, as a community at the school, feel inspired by how much you have managed to achieve even before your reign. And we hope that you will continue to positively impact thousands of lives all around the world. No matter what age, race, gender or religion, we believe all people can be inspired by you. Also, 
Now is a time of great change, be it for you as you begin your reign, me and many of my friends as we move on to a new school, and everyone across the globe who is experiencing a change, from adapting to life in a new area or simpler things such as making new friends or even trying out a new skill. All of these people can be inspired by you and your coronation. In fact, almost everything you have done and are currently doing can be found as a source of inspiration for some people. So keep up the phenomenal work, continue to inspire people everywhere, but don't be afraid to embrace the inevitable change. Yours sincerely, Barnaby Shearer, Newton Brack. Thank you.